everybody, it's Seriously Sydney here, and today I am bringing you a tutorial on how to paint a praying mantis. So starting off, I went through my Mission Gold watercolors, tested them all out, and just picked out the colors that I wanted to use, and poured them into pans. So the colors I ended up choosing are, let's see here, I wrote them down. So Permanent Yellow Light, Greenish Yellow, Rose Matter, Red Violet, Prussian Blue, Indigo, and Red Brown. So this piece, if you've been following, is the, this is the third video on this piece. So I will include links in the description to the sketch and the inking process. Continuing on, the brushes I ended up using are the Creative Mark Mimics. So that's the one with the blue handle. Um, the one with the red handle is the Princeton Neptune, a Princeton Neptune watercolor brush. And then the one with, you'll see it probably sometime later, it's got a blue handle but yellow or golden-ish yellow-orange bristles. Those are just some random tack one brushes I have. The paper is Canson XL watercolor paper. And I started by laying down kind of like a base layer for defining the shape of, or the, to give the inking a little bit of depth and dimension to make it three dimensional in appearance. So I started with the lemon yellow and kind of shaded it. And then I'm using the rose color, there we go, rose matter to tone the edges and kind of build up the color. So I'm starting with the yellow because it's the lightest color and it's also the hardest to add on top of all these other colors because these colors are a little bit staining. And let's see here, what else? These colors, I tried to get them pick out colors that were for the most part transparent because I wanted the ink to really show through and yep, brought the camera in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. I'm adding the rose and the red, red violet and just kind of going back and forth, toning it. Right now it kind of has a peach tone to it, but the plates on its neck are a little bit less peach-like, so the main body has a peach tone, but the plates on its neck are a little bit more blue toned. And I was doing that to kind of help differentiate it and also add some uniqueness to it. What else here? So this is my first time really doing a big piece with the Magellan Mission Gold watercolors. And something I had not noticed before is that they don't really move or blend unless you blend them, if that makes sense. So they don't bleed into each other and blend on the paper very much you kind of have to do that yourself with the brush. And I had found out later that, that the reason behind that is because these paints don't contain ox gall. So they don't really flow by themselves. They just kind of sit where you put them. So that's kind of, I think that'd be really good for doing faces and for things where you want really smooth washes and really smooth blending. I think that looked really cool. So it ended up looking really interesting on the face and the different plates of the mantis. However, the background I found I had a little bit of difficulty doing, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. So let's see here, I was saving the eyes for later because I wasn't entirely sure what color I wanted to make them. I yeah, I just couldn't figure out exactly what color. I was like, do I do a green? Do I do make it just blend in with the rest? And so, yeah, I started with making it like a kaleidoscope of colors. I thought that would be interesting because the eyes are, oh, what's that called? Insects eyes. They have, oh, I forgot the name. Essentially, it's like they have little, they have compound eyes. 
believe it's compound eyes so I wanted to kind of give that effect in the painting without drawing or inking the lines themselves. Yep, but for the most part I started with the base of yellow and kind of built it up with the different reds and stuff. So right here I'm using the rose and I'm just going in light doing light washes to shade in the lines between the plates on the face and on the neck and stuff. Just adding in details, kind of lightly, multiple washes, letting the washes dry, just really layering this up. And I'm very happy I took the time to go through all the colors and pick the transparent ones because I have a slight tendency to pick opaque ones and just kind of go with it. Ooh, that looks like a good color, and then it covers up the ink. So this time I learned and I did not do that. <laughs> So right here I'm going and I'm doing the like shoulder joints and then what I'm going to call the mouth tentacles and I did that with a darker color. wanted to really differentiate them and contrast them from the rest of the body. And then I'm trying to fix the little, let's call it a candle shaped thing on its head. And I was having some issues with that because I couldn't figure out how to get the shape that I wanted to show up. Like, because you, it, if you don't add the shading in the right spot, it just didn't look the same as I had imagined it in my head, so I was having some difficulty with that. In the end it turned out better, but I'm not really sure how I could have gotten it to be the exact shape. I think I end up adding some red into it and pink into it to help, help it along, but it's there's something missing. I haven't figured out what it is yet. But right here I'm going in and I'm continuing to define the lines between the plates on the face and I end up also going into the neck a little bit and defining those some more and then I well, yep, I work on the little piece above on its head but below the candle shaped thing. Um, let's see here, the eyes are a whole thing in themselves, so they end up being much darker than the rest of the face, and I'm, they, tur they turn out interesting, in person they're a little bit muddy looking, which kind of makes sense when you see all the colors that end up going into it. So that was the only part of this piece that didn't really look transparent and clear. However, it kind of works because when the eyes are looking at something, it reflects what it sees. And then when you see the background and all, it just makes sense that they wouldn't be nearly as clear as the rest of the insect. So I go in and you see with the two different brushes in my hand. So one is just has water in it to kind of blend out wash and then the other has actual paint in it. So I lay paint down, then I blend it out with the other brush and I just kind of go back and forth like that. That's where you see the two paint brushes in my hand. Okay, now I'm going to start working on the background right here. I have a kneaded eraser and I end up going over the piece because I forgot to erase certain lines. 
So I went over the piece before I did the background and I started by wetting the background so the paint would flow. However, it didn't really flow because there was no oxcomb in the paint. So yeah, so the main dark color is the indigo and then there's the yellow, green, or greenish yellow. And I thought if those were the main colors for the background. I wanted to pick something kind of green and dark and a little bit moody, I guess you could call it, for the background. And when it came to the background, that's where I was like, wait a minute, these paints are different. They're not doing what I expected. They just kind of left the paintbrush marks. So I was a little bit confused. So I kept like trying to encourage it to flow, but it didn't really flow. So I was like, okay, I'll go for a very textured background since everything else is so smooth. And I kind of just build that up. I think it took two layers, three layers. Kind of let it dry as I dry as I moved around the piece for the background. Just kind of let certain parts dry a little bit while I was doing other parts. It's pretty close to two layers. Yep, so another thing I did to kind of help it along is I made really, really wet washes. So when I painted it on, I used a lot of water. And it helped a little bit, and I wanted the background to be also very vivid. Um, and the reason why I didn't do it first is because I wanted to correct the tones and everything in the piece, and then do the background and then go back in and add the finishing details to the piece and the depth where it was needed so that the piece didn't look too washed out. Normally, or what most people would suggest is doing the whole piece at once, like work on the background, then do the main focal point, and then do go back and forth, because if you don't, the main focal point would might look too washed out. But I did it this way on purpose, because I wanted to add the most vivid details afterwards. It's just the way I wanted to do this piece. And we're getting closer to my favorite part. My favorite part of this painting was the antenna. So we're getting closer. And you can see how I made the face much more vivid in this part. I'm just working on the details, really trying to make it vivid. And so that it kind of pops. And see, see, I start working on the antenna, slowly building it up. Um, I made it a slightly different color, well, using the same colors from the insect or the mantis, praying mantis, but different tones, and I included in the rest of the insect's body so that it was different, but kind of. Like, it was coherent, but not the same, if that makes sense. And now the eyes are getting to the point where they get a little bit muddier. I end up putting in a tiny bit of indigo, and then you get a whole bunch of other colors mixing. So you get, like, with the eyes anyway, it's going to be like you get the reds and then the greens mixed together. I have the yellow and the indigo so it muddies it up a little bit but when you get the green background on red eyes it kind of makes sense and yep I just kind of add more details to make it more vivid and here I'm trying to fix the little well I was trying to fix the little candle thing on its head and it is not a candle, I might want to clarify that. So it's not an actual candle, but it kind of reminds me of a candle when I look at it. So I'm referring to it as a candle because I do not know the exact name of it.
Okay, and now I'm building up on the body itself some more definition, more making it more vivid. And I believe this is the part where I add the greenish yellow to the piece, a little bit more of it, because I kept that out of most of the piece. I just included it in the background and stuff. Okay, and then this is the Himmy or Hi My white gouache, and I'm using that to add back some highlights to like make the eyes seem reflective and different things like that. And I go back in with more paint, so this is kind of like a back and forth process. So I darken up certain sections close to the gouache, but I don't go over the gouache with watercolor. And wow, this is so close to the end. You guys are nearly there. Um, since we're so close, let's see if I can come up with a special word to comment. Let's see here. What about green, greenish yellow? Because that's that's a very pretty color. So we'll, we'll go with that. Greenish yellow will be the special word to comment down in the comment section if you made it this far. And if you're liking what you're seeing and would like to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and yeah, comment down below. So here yep, you can see I darken the eyes, muddy them up a little bit more, and then that really dark mixture on my palette is some of the indigo and I believe the red violet. So it's a very strong purple, very intense, and yep, there we go. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!